Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from any part of the world you are watching this video now. My name is Mr. David Hatunda. Alright, I'm welcoming you to Goodbye Online Learning, online class. This is a means whereby we are using to reach our students uh, despite this uh, irrespective of the, of the compelling intricacies of this lockdown. Alright, this is CRS class. I'm welcoming you to my video platform where I'm going to be using it to explain and showing you some videos as far as CRS is concerned. Alright, last week we started a topic about the supremacy of God and this has to do with the demonstration of the power of the Yahweh God in the land of Israel. Alright, before I proceed to this week's lesson, let me just do a quick recap of what I taught you during the Zoom app class uh, teaching last week. Alright, last week we talked about the supremacy of God as demonstrated through a prophet called Prophet Elijah. What happened was that the, there, was a, there was an evil king that ruled in the land of Israel in the days of Elijah. His name was King Ahab. King Ahab was very evil in his ways. His ways were very contrary to the will of God. With the commandment of the Lord uh, and the law of God as regards the worship of Yahweh and, the, uh, and, and non worship of idols in the land of Israel. King Ahab married another, he was evil, and he married another evil woman. The kind of woman actually that you marry tells us the kind of person you be. Because your woman will definitely influence you, whether you like it or not. So this guy married another evil woman. His name Name was named Jezebel. Jezebel was a daughter of the king of Sidon. These are the places where God commanded the children of Israel never to marry from. God told them never to marry outside the nation of Israel. Really, the law was prominently first broken by a king called King Solomon. The guy married 700 wives and 300 concubines. What a genius, Guinness World Record. 700 wives and 300 concubines. He married out of the land of Israel. He married outside the nation of Israel. And this woman, the woman that he married, they, they influenced him negatively and turned his heart against the worship of the Yahweh God of Israel. So they introduced the law, the, the worship of idols into the land of Israel. This persists unto the days of Ahab. When Ahab also married another evil woman called Jezebel. So Jezebel brought the worship of Pa and Asherah to the land of Israel. Pa is, uh, is always referred to, was always referred to as the, the male god, the male god, while Asherah is always referred to as the as, as the goddess. So the, the, the queen brought this the worship of these gods into the land of Israel. And it was so severe, so bad to such an extent that the nation of Israel started worshipping back inside the very temple. The temple that Solomon built, they, sat, they started worshipping their idols inside the temple. So God was, was fed up with them and he inspired a prophet. He set up a prophet named Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah was always nicknamed as the prophet of fire. You don't joke near this kind of prophet. If, if not, you will call that fire and, burn, and turn it into a burnt offering. He did it in his days. There was a time on three occasions that the king sent some soldiers to go and arrest and burn it, uh, prophet Elijah. To go and arrest him and bring him to the palace. And Elijah was seeing them he said, if I be a man of God, let fire descend down from heaven and consume them all. And fire came down from heaven and consumed the first 50, the second 50, and the fire turned them to a roasted chicken. Thank God that the leader of the third set of soldiers, thank God that the guy was very smart, that he had to humbly appeal to the prophets. All right, so this, uh, the, evil, the evil in the land of Israel persisted so much that they were so much worshipping idols, even in the, in, the, in the temple. So one day, inspired by God, Elijah went to the king, uh, to the king palace 
So he told the king that I'm not, I, I'm quoting from First King chapter one. And he said, "As surely as the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, there will be no rain, there will be no dew in the land except by my word." So Elijah shut the door of rain from heaven. There was no rain in the land of Israel. There was no dew, and you know when rain is not falling in the land and there's no dew, that means that is that is severe famine. So immediately God directed Elijah to go to a brook called Brook Cherit. It was in this Brook Cherit. He was drinking for this Brook Cherit, and while he was in in, in this Brook Cherit, Brook Cherit is in, is towards the east east eastern side of, of of Jordan. So while he was in the, was in this brook, he was drinking for this brook, and God commanded that a raven, a raven bird, to always come and feed Elijah. So a raven bird will bring bread and meat every morning and the same time in the evening. So see the time that the family lasted. Sit down and enjoy this short video. I'm going to be back in a moment. Two years of centuries ago. In a small portion of this vast world of ours, there lived a people called the Children of Israel. From them came certain men and women through whom God revealed himself to all mankind. One of these was Elijah, a fearless prophet. Almost 3,000 years ago, a great prophet came from the wild and mountainous region of Gilead. His name was Elijah, a man who had dedicated his life to God. And now God was sending him to the king of Israel. In those days, King Ahab ruled over Israel, and Queen Jezebel ruled over Ahab. It was she who built altars for the worship of Baal, the heathen god. And because the people worshipped idols, a famine was to come upon the land. As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be no dew nor rain these coming years until I say so. Then the Lord spoke to Elijah, saying, Go away from here and hide by the brook Kirith. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered ravens to feed you there. And so, obeying the Lord, Elijah hurried away from the palace. And Elijah lived in the wilderness and drank from the brook Kirith. And the ravens brought him bread and meat every morning and every evening. In this way, God provided food for him. Let's move straight to this week's topic. This week, we are going to be looking at Elijah at Mount Carmel. And in this topic, in the process of this lesson, we are going to be looking at the contest that happened between Elijah and the prophet of Baal. Then, we are going to be looking at the significant lesson that can be derived from this story. So let's, pro let's proceed. At Mount Carmel, after three years of no rain, no dew from heaven, God told his prophet, Prophet Elijah, to go and reveal himself to King Ahab. So on his way, when King Ahab saw Prophet Elijah, he pointed accusation fingers at him, saying, Behold, the troublers of Israel. And straight away the prophet returned it that I am not the prophet, I'm not the troubler of Israel. You and your household, you are the troublers of Israel. You have forsaken the way of God by following idols, by worshipping idols. Who will the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has told 
his children never to bow down and worship. So, you are in the house of Israel, you are the real traveler, you are the house, your house, your wife, your household, you are the real traveler of Israel. So he told King Ahab, let gather all the citizens, all, all the children of God, the citizens, gather them at Mount Carmel and your prophet of Baal. Let us have a contest. Let us know who, who the real God is, whether it is Baal or whether it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So at Mount Carmel, when the prophet of Baal gathered themselves, when the children of Israel gathered themselves, everyone were present and the prophet told them that how long will you go on leaping between two options? If God is the real God, serve him, follow him, and if it is bad, then follow him. So they kept quiet. So he told them, let us raise two altars. Let them have their home book. Let me have my home book. Let us, let us cut this wood and place it on the altar. Let us gather wood. Let us gather wood. Nobody should put on fire in this wood. Nobody, no fire. Then let us call fire from heaven. And the Lord, any God that answered by fire is the real God. Those of you that you attend MFM Church, that is where uh, you really pick that your, 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 your favorite song. God of Elijah send a fire. God of Elijah send a fire. God of Elijah send a fire. God of Elijah send on fire. That is why you pick your favorite prayer point. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise! So that is why you pick that your favorite song. The Lord that answered by fire. He will be my God, the Lord that answered by fire. He will be my God, the Lord that answered by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord that answered by fire. Let him be my God. So Elijah told them, let us let us have a contest. Let, let your prophet, your prophet of God, let them build their own altar. Let them cut their wood. Let them cut, put the wood. And let them call fire from heaven. I will also do mine. Any God that answered by fire is the real God. So all the children of Israel, they agreed to this contest. So the prophets of God proceeded. They were the first, they were the first group to to, to, to kick off this uh, contest. So she, they shouted, they shouted at the top of their voice, praying to the idol, but to come and to come and consume the offering, the sacrifice with fire from morning to new day. When it was new day and then uh, there was no answer, Elijah started mocking them and said, ah, maybe you should call upon the name of your God. He might be sleeping. You better call on me very well so that he will wake up. Oh, maybe he's even, maybe he has even go to market. He started mocking them. Then when it was evening time, the, the prophet of God, they called on their God to such an extent that they started piercing their body with knives and blood started gushing out so that maybe if their idol, if their God see that, that uh, their zeal, it would be compared to answer them. But there was no response from him. So when it was evening, Elijah called the people of the, the people of Israel to gather to, to come nearer. So he arranged his altar very well, and to to every to everyone's surprise, he told them to after telling them to gather twelve stones, which symbolize the twelve tribe of Israel. He told them to pour water on the altar. He told them to pour water again the second time, and he told them to do it again the third time. You are expecting fire, you are pouring water on the wood. Is that not crazy? But he wanted to reveal the power of God. So he lit up his hands towards heaven and he prayed, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He told God to answer him by fire so that everyone around will know that the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the real God. Before Elijah could finish his prayer, Fire came from heaven, licked up the wood, burnt all, licked up the water, scattered all the stones, everything. And the people started shouting, The Lord God is God! The Lord God is God! Oh, but when they saw the awesome demonstration of the power of God, they started running away. 
So, Elijah commanded those people that were around not to allow any one of them to escape. So, he killed the 450 prophets of Baal, which later put him into a woman's trouble. Yes, in my subsequent class, I'm going to be explaining uh, how the killing of the 450 prophets of Baal landed Elijah into trouble. The man of God put himself into trouble to such an extent that the man who killed 450 men, 450 prophets of Baal, the man ran away. I will tell you that in my next class. All right. So after this, Elijah went to King Ahab and he told him that he should start running home because he can hear the abundance or uh, the sound of abundance rain coming. So he told Elijah to start running home. And that evening, Elijah prayed to God and God, God sent, down, sent down rain. After three years, sit down and enjoy the, the concluding part of, the, of this video. I'll be right back. Elijah sent a messenger to King Ahab, telling him that he wanted to speak to him. Are you the one that's making trouble for Israel? I haven't troubled Israel, but you and your family have, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have worshipped Baal. Now, therefore, send men to bring all Israel to Mount Carmel, and also the 450 prophets of Baal, and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So all the people and the priests of Baal gathered on Mount Carmel, and they waited to see what Elijah would do. How long will you go on limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Give us two bulls. And let the prophets of Baal choose one bull for themselves. And cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood. But put no fire under. I'll prepare the other one and put it on the wood and put no fire under it. You call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire, he is God. <laughs> First, the priests of Baal offered a sacrifice on their altar, and they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, but there was no answer of any kind. No fire came to the altar. Then Elijah began to mock them. Cry louder, he's your God. And either he's lost in thought or on a long journey. Or maybe he's asleep and needs to be awakened. So the priests of Baal called louder and raved on into the afternoon, but still there was no answer. Then Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Israel, and rebuilt the altar. And he made a trench around it, and arranged the wood and cut up the other bowl and laid it on the wood. Fill buckets with water and pour it on the sacrifice and on the wood. Do it a second time and a third. of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, 
and that you told me to do all that I have done. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me, so that these people may know that you, O Lord, are God. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up the water that was in the trench. Then the people believed in the Lord. Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let any one of them escape. Go back to your palace, King Ahab, for soon there will be a heavy rain. ...straight to the significance lessons. Air weakness showed that the weakness of a leader can ruin a nation. You see, we as Christians in our country, we have the sole responsibility of praying for our leaders. Because especially when it comes to their decision making, we have the responsibility of praying for them that a negative influence will not occur when it comes to them making decisions that, will, that, that, that can hamper the progress and peace of our country. From this story, we could see that Ahab witnessed in as much as allowing the influence of, of his evil wife, evil wife to replace Yahwehism to Baalism as the national religion of of the country of Israel as a nation resulted to a severe famine, a severe hardship upon the land. So we have a, a responsibility of praying for our leaders in order not to allow any negative influence to, to, to hamper their, their good decision making. Number two, God is always on hand to defend his cause. Hence, he called on Elijah to defend Yahwehism. One thing I want you to realize is that there will never be a time on this earth when the name of God will cease to be glorified. Yes, it may look as if the devil is winning, there is sexual perversion, uh, people are, uh, are not listening to God, they are not obedient to the law, laws of God. Yes, it will look at, like that. However, even in the midst of it, God is looking for people that will stand up for the truth, that will uphold the truth, that will say no to disrespecting parents, that will say no to disrespecting teachers, that will say no to laziness, that will say no to sexual perversion. Doesn't mean everyone is going astray. They will stand for what is right. They will, they will defend the cause of God on the planet Earth. Most people still have moral, moral courage to challenge evil authority. Yes, like our school good vibe college, we don't support examination by practice. That is an example of an institution that you can still in a society where examination by practice is the order of the day. This is a perfect example of an institution that still stands up in, the, in, the, in upholding the cause of God on planet Earth when it comes towards truth as far as examination is concerned. No examination by practice. God is expecting you to be like that also. All right, before I call it a day uh, for this class, all right, let me just uh, sit down and enjoy these short uh, animations, this uh, and video song that has to do with Elijah. Let's go.